good day out there today. We got a great video on deck that I'm very happy to bring to you guys at home. Today we're going to be doing a black book video featuring a variety of markers that we have here on the website. A lot of you guys don't realize these are great in black books. These are poster markers. So if you want to fill in your piece, do it real quickly. <laughs> This, this might be a little bit overkill, we'll find out. Um, but the little glass bodies, they are perfect. They are great for filling in your book and they're nice and juicy. And here's the great thing about them too, is they do not, they do not react with alcohol-based markers. So if you do a hard line with an alcohol-based and go back with the oil-based Magic Ink marker, you'll get a perfectly clean line. It will not feather amazing stuff. So before we get started, I wanna cover a few different things here real quick because, uh, well, <clears throat> I was wrong. I was wrong. Ah, I was wrong. Yes, I was wrong. So let's, let's talk about these two little markers here. Now, a bunch of people were replying to me talking about these two little markers and saying that Dr. Guts does not fill or flow through drippy mops. And I was incredulous about the whole thing. I was like, what are you even talking about? Like we sell Dr. Guts in a drip mop. We, it flows all the time. But I wasn't hearing you, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's my job to hear you. And apparently I wasn't hearing you. What you meant is specifically these little mini mops. And you're absolutely right. I did test it and it didn't flow, but it confused me because soul tip paint flows through it perfectly. But what is the reason why? That is the question, what is the reason why? Now I know some of you guys are like, oh, Green Ranger, you know. Okay, first of all, I know this is hard to believe. I know this is hard to believe but I have not tried every single marker and in ink mixture in every single mop in existence. I know. Maybe it's a little bit of hubris, I don't know. Uh, but it's also part because a lot of times kids will send me their opinion based off of one anecdote. I think that's what gets me sometimes because like they'll have like one experience with something and they tell me that's how it is all the time. And so I'm reflexively like, no, maybe it's you. But sometimes I'm wrong. Maybe it's me. And in this circumstance, I'm definitely wrong. I'm definitely wrong. You guys are absolutely right. Dr. Guts does not flow through these mops. But it's not a fault of Dr. Guts. It's not a fault of these mops. It's just some things don't really compute well with each other. They just don't sometimes. Take a look at this. This is the OTR. This is gold. I don't have any silver right now, but it's still metallic. Look how much pigment is in the OTR ink. Now look at the Dr. Guts. You see a difference? <laughs> It's a significant difference. So there's a lot more pigment here, but here's the question. Is it because there's more pigment or is it because the pigment particles are bigger? Now that is the question. And I think we should explore that in a future video, but all in all, I gotta say, touche salesman, touche. You guys, touche. So also, also, we have another video on the way. Um, I just wanna give you a heads up what's going on. Texta versus the Magic Ink white markers. What's the difference? I don't know. We'll have to find out about that soon. So keep your eyes peeked for that. Uh, and then one last thing, one last thing. Where's it at? 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 Somebody sent me a bunch of gear, but they didn't leave a name. They didn't leave an at. They didn't leave anything. It was just like an anonymous bag sent to me. Let's let's see what. I want I want to give you props for sending me stuff, bro. You got you got to let me know. Uh, let's see. I I think I'm a little too thick for this, but let, let me just. Oh my God, that is awesome. Hold on a second. I think it's like a. Something from China. China! Let's see if it fits. <clears throat> Sleeves go on. Whew. Dipped in a juicy tracksuit. <laughs> Look at this, that's so awesome. <laughs> Let's get it started. I'm using the Magic Ink Jumbo for my fill, and as you can see, it's quite a large marker but I will tell you this it saved me so much time on my fill you know if you got to really like stamp out these black books like and you know how to freak this marker you know use the edges use the side you can definitely get your fill done very very quickly and the nice thing about it is because it's an oil-based marker and the other graphic markers like the Copic and whatnot those are alcohol-based markers they're not going to react with each other so if you lay one next to each other you get a really nice clean line and that is why you need both types of markers in your sketchbook. You need graphic markers. You also need oil-based markers. And you also need paint pens because the paint pen acts like a spray paint. You feel me? It's almost like a spray paint. You know, say you got a line that you don't like. For example, the top of the A, I felt it was too square. 
And later on in this, you'll see that I'll kind of round off the A to not perfectly match the T because you don't want them to perfectly match sometimes. You need it to be a little bit asymmetrical, you feel me? Just a little bit asymmetrical. But the top part of the A was just a little bit too square, so I rounded it off with a paint pen and came back over with my outline color and created a much more, uh, at least in my eyes, a more appealing swoop. You know, a lot of this stuff is really, it's subjective, you know what I mean? Style is subjective, like what you think looks good is, is very, very subjective. That's why I try to focus mostly on techniques and how markers work, because I don't really like, like your style is yours, you know, like you figure it out, you do whatever you want, that's, that's up to you. But what I can do is just show you how markers lay down on top of each other. And as you can see, I'm using a micron right now. These are microns, right? Sorry about that, my bad. Pigma graphic markers. Those are by Sakura. I think they're a Sakura marker. They work really good with the paint pens and the graphic and the oil-based markers. And I'm very happy with them. Uh, as you can see, I'm lacing in a box truck right now. I don't, I don't really know where I was going with this at the time. I was just kind of just, oh, just laying this, do this, do that. That's honestly like, that's how I do most of my sketchbooks. I, I don't really have a plan. And I kind of like it that way. I'm just like, you know, I've, when I started this out, I was like, I just want to do some Calvin and Hobbes stuff. Oh, check this out. Look at that. That's the Copic marker laying next to the oil-based marker. See how clean the line is? It's not bad. Not bad at all. Now, they will not blend with each other. That is for sure. So just keep, keep conscious of that. Uh, but if you want to blend, just do alcohol with alcohol and oil with oil and you should be good. Oh, I want to talk a little bit about this. I had a few people telling me that their Molotov markers were watery, in particular this color, this uh, this green. What's it called? Uh, grasshopper. I've never had a, a, a watery grasshopper ever. I think you just need to shake it more, homie. Seriously, just shake it more. Uh, <laughs> as you can see, <laughs> I'm laying the lines on right now. That That is the one thing with the Molotov markers is they do have a lot of pigment and if you don't properly shake them, you will get like that clear, the clear liquid medium coming out of there. And uh, you don't want that. Make sure you shake it really well. I will say this, the fluorescent colors don't hide as well. There's a difference between watery and not hiding. So if you're using a fluorescent color, uh, you might want to put a white base coat underneath to make sure your lines are nice and solid. Uh, but all in all, I gotta say the grasshopper is just as thick as I expected. I, I do see some issues with alcohol-based inks. If you try to go over alcohol-based inks with, al with the, with the uh, Molotov markers, sometimes uh, you will get a little bit of bleed in. I don't know why it does that, but it does. Uh, just put another coat and you're good. Uh, as you can see, I'm kind of rounding off 3D here. This is just like an old school technique that I found in the Dawn One book. It's something I used to do back in the mid 90s actually. And I was like, ah, oh, why don't I do this anymore? And you know what? It looks really good. It really kind of brings the depth of 3D out. And I think, uh, I think I'm gonna start using this more often again. It's just all you're doing is just rounding the lines at the edge. It looks pretty good. I think this is the pastel peach. Let me see. Yeah, pastel peach or peach pastel. This is a really good fill color because it doesn't really, it doesn't really contrast with a lot of stuff. It's very subtle. You know, sometimes when you put too much stuff in your fill, it gets a little bit too loud. Uh, I like the peach pastel because it's very light, but you see it, but it's not really making a huge, it's not really taken away from the letters themselves. And that's kind of like the balance, I guess, is you want to have a wild fill, but you don't want to take away from the letters themselves. So that's, that's kind of one of those things. Oh, some of you guys are asking me about this marker. This is a AP hit and go marker that I just put one for all ink in it. So it's Molotov one for all ink and AP hit and go. And uh, that's all that is right there. Oh, just dropped some markers. <clears throat> When you're done with all this, I highly recommend going back with your outline color and just kind of cleaning up the lines a little bit. I think you'll find that the piece comes out a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner, a little bit better. It's a good thing, like Martha Stewart says. Um, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with the piece. I, I kind of bled the T off the edge a little bit. I have a tendency to do that. I don't know if it's because I'm left-handed or what. Uh, generally, I prefer a bigger piece of paper, but it just happened to be what I had at the moment. So whatever, whatever. Ah, there we go, all done. Damn, Hobbs looks hella tight. So does Calvin, actually. This is actually a really nice black book. I really like the way it turned out. So anyways, um, if you have any questions about the markers, definitely comment below. This is all I used right here. You, you need all the markers. <laughs> it's the bottom line. You need all the markers. That's what it boils down to. So anyways, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is GR signing out. Um, it's 2020, it's a new year. We've got a lot of stuff going on. So be sure to uh, comment below, let me know what you guys wanna see. I'm very, very much looking forward to starting off 2020 with you guys. So I gotta go guys, it's time for me to move. I'm moving to a new house, super pumped. Uh, but I'll see you guys next week. Thank you very much, this is Art Primo, GR, signing out, peace.